happy Saturday, everybody. There are some major changes happening in the housing market and specifically in Nashville, we're going to talk about what those changes mean and how they're impacting the housing market from mortgage rates to inventory to contract volume. So without further ado, let's get into the data. You have been hearing probably that we're hitting record highs in mortgage rates for the year and we are. You can see we've touched this high basically three times once in July. Now we're back in August. We hit it again. Both of those actually, interestingly enough, coincided with the ADP report and then came down after the employment report from the government. Interesting. But the bottom line is, is that we're in an upward trajectory. Now, why this is important is because there's a lot of news about treasuries. And just so if you don't know, treasuries are what drives the market for mortgage rates and specifically the 10 year treasury. OK, but you're probably hearing, oh, when mortgage rates go back down, when someone says when mortgage rates go back down with certainty, you really need to dismiss that, especially especially if you are buying a house and you are trying to do like a 2-1 buy down to afford your home. You should never ever use uh, a temporary rate buy down to get yourself in a house with the expectation you will refinance later. That is foolishness. Okay, now that I'm done with that rant, we can see this is driven by the 10-year yield. And the 10-year yield has actually I think it structurally changed and it changed when Japan announced that they were stopping yield curve control. And you can see really we go back to Q1 of 2022 and we can see that interest expense for the federal government has gone from 600 billion annualized all the way up to 970 billion annualized in just over a year. Now this is really important guys because if you run rate our interest expense with our national debt, you're gonna get, depending on what interest rate you use, the lowest being about 4% or the highest being 5.5%, you're gonna get anywhere from 1.2 trillion to well over 1.6 trillion on the current debt. Guys, this isn't even accumulating $2 trillion of debt a year, which is what we are accumulating. And this is on the back of news where the Treasury Department just revealed that it's borrowing $300 billion more than it estimated in May. Okay, this is very, very bad news for the treasury market and very bad news for mortgage rates. Even Warren Buffett, who says, oh, I buy treasuries. He only buys short term treasuries, three months and six months. He is not buying a long dated treasury. So when he says treasuries are a great investment, he's literally talking about the three month treasury. Okay, Elon Musk, the same. He came out and said, oh, treasuries are great. They're buying short dated treasuries, guys. They're not buying a 10 year treasury. And why that's important is because if, if, if a new paradigm or a new structural change happens with the 10 year and your 30 year, we could see a five, six, 7% uh, 10 year treasury. What does that mean for mortgage rates? That means a seven, eight, nine mortgage rate. I mean, we're at a 3% spread from the 10 year yield right now. And a 3% spread, guys, 8% mortgage rates aren't that far-fetched and believe me if we get an eight percent mortgage rate it's going to continue to put downward pressure on a market that's already crumpling under interest rate pressure now i know that prices are staying the same and i'm going to show you that right now so we saw in june we had 475 okay down from a high in may of 480 and guess what we popped back up to around 480 we're at 478 890 okay and i think that's probably where it'll be or it'll be very close to that so 479 Okay, so what that means is that we're basically just bouncing around 475 and 480, but it's still 5% down from where we peaked. So we're still about, well, 4% down now. 480, you're about 4% down from where we peaked. Now, why this is important is because if we get into August and we still have that 480 number, we could start seeing a year over year flat to even a year over year growth. So people can start saying, oh, year over year, it's up, it's up. Okay, it's it's up potentially if our numbers stay flat. But keep in mind, guys, that a third, 20 to 30% of demand has disappeared from this market. So there are buyers sitting on the sidelines that aren't buying, they're choosing to rent, or just can't make it happen. Maybe they're consolidating into another house because they cannot afford these prices. So there's a huge amount of buyers sitting on the sidelines waiting for this market to make 
since. Now, when we look at active listings, we see 5,700 plus this 1,100, that puts us at 6,800. When we go back and look at June, we close at 6,600. Guys, this is about a 3% growth in inventory, the way Greater Nashville Realtors measures it. Now, I measure it a little bit different. I just look at active and coming soon. If it's under contract, I don't look at it. So that's one of the biggest differences between the way I look at it and the way Greater Nashville Realtors. But regardless, inventory is going up every single week. And when we look at demand, demand, contract volume is going down. We're at 2,400 contract volume for Middle Tennessee for single family homes in 31 days. Okay. Now, when we look at pendings here, you can see May pendings were 3,000. Come down to June, pendings were 2,800. What are the pendings going to be? I don't have that number here because this is just filtered on single family homes, but I can tell you it's going to be lower than it was a month ago. This is lower than it's been since really early February, but it's not, we're not seeing a dramatic response to interest rates just yet. I think we will, but we're not seeing it. It's not in the daily data yet. Now let's take a look. Williamson County, you know, I'm always covering Williamson County. It's fizzling out. If this is, if there is seasonality, it's gotta be in Williamson County. It went from 430 on June 26, literally um, a little over a month later, it's a hundred less. We're talking about a 25% drop in contract volume in a little over a month. And, and if this trend continues, if we do go back into the 200s for contract volume, just think what that's gonna do if with active listings. We will have a six month supply of active listings very quickly. So you can see we're at 3.2. That's the highest it's been since uh, literally January. We have to go back to mid-January to see something in the threes. And so Williamson County particularly is setting itself up for, I believe, massive price drops. Now, these are higher end homes. These are more expensive, but if you've been waiting all year to buy, you're entering a buy window just from the metrics of supply and demand. I'm not talking about prices, but but you will have more leverage than you've had all year. And higher interest rates only help you. If you're buying a house under a million dollars, you really should be buying, you should assume someone's mortgage. And I did a video on that. If I can't buy an FHA loan and assume somebody's mortgage, I don't know why I would buy in this market. It's just absolutely insane. The, the rental comps from buying, it, it just doesn't make sense. It's the only way I'd buy in this market. That being said, if you're buying a house over a million dollars, you're probably cash heavy less interest rate sensitive. And that really only helps you. So Williamson County, this is a time where you can really push on price and try to get a 10, 20, 30% discount um, on a house that may be listed in June too high. And now they're chasing a price down. Uh, it, and then you just push on price even more and try to get, get a good deal. A couple other things I wanted to show you. So this neighborhood is in North Lebanon, Tennessee. Okay, and Lebanon is in Wilson County. It's just east of Nashville, so you can see it right here. And if we zoom in, this little neighborhood, the reason I like this neighborhood, they're the exact same size. Every single one of them are 1360, 1363, 1363, 1363. They're all 1363 square feet. So if they're all the same floor plan, we can really get a dynamic of what tiers of prices they put in here. Now you can see they ran last July all the way from 193 a square foot all the way up to 225 a square foot. Okay, what's really important, you can see there's one, two, three, there's like basically four tiers of prices in here for these specific floor plans. But look what happened when interest rates went out of control. Now keep in mind, these are new builds. So when they were built, they were probably under contract for 90 days um, or very well could have been. Okay, so they, they had four tiers of prices. It looks to me like, like I'm just looking at the data, okay? I didn't go back and look at the advertisements. I'm just looking at sales price per square foot on a floor pan that looks exactly the same. And you can see the 225s and the 215s, they're nowhere to be found anymore, okay? The highest one just closed on July 31st at 211, but really under 210, which if you think about it, that's $15 $15, I mean, that's almost, that's like a six, seven, eight percent discount from where they were if these are the same whatever amenities, which I suspect they either are or the, those aren't selling anymore, right? That the prices aren't working. Now, here's why this is important. And this is what I tried to hammer home last week. These are highly leveraged. So sales price on these are like 300,000. Okay, they're very low priced homes 
for the market, right? Our median sales price is 450, 480 now, and these are selling for 300,000. Okay. The people borrowing on these homes are borrowing at almost 100% financed. So if there is a disruption, right? The price is going down from 225, 215 a square foot all the way down to 210 to 180 a square foot. If there is a situation where job losses happen, these people can't get out of these houses. They're not going to be able to sell them. They're probably not going to be able to rent them. They are losing equity and they're 100% leveraged. They will foreclose on these houses. And so even in a market that's quote unquote healthy, even in Nashville, that's supposed to be great. You have to be careful about where you buy. And if you're buying in a very highly leveraged area where people are borrowing hundred percent, if they're offering you three and a half percent down and they're encouraging you to do it, especially new builds, guess what? They're doing it to everybody that comes in there. You need to be very cautious about that because they're building neighborhoods around these neighborhoods that are also more competitive. They may try to keep the price the same in that neighborhood, but as soon as they finish off that neighborhood, they're going to build another one that's just as good or better and less expensive and people are going to move in that neighborhood before they buy your house in the neighborhood that you just borrowed almost 100 percent financing on so you have a high risk in the next couple of years in this market you've got to be very very careful last thing i want to show you word cloud this is a word cloud for west haven so west haven i took all the descriptions for houses that closed and uh, basically what a word cloud is, is it just takes the words and it magnifies them based on the number of times it hits in each description. So here you can see, I thought this was interesting. And the word that stuck out to me, there was a couple of them. One is kitchen and the other is floor. That's just kind of interesting. Like why are those words so common in descriptions? I don't know. You tell me what you think is interesting about that. Tell me what word sticks out. Is this even valuable? Uh, would it be interesting to do word cloud in another neighborhood? I don't know. You just know I'm obsessed with West Haven. So here it is, West Haven. And with that, I hope you guys have a great weekend and I look forward to seeing you next Saturday.